so fast. I appreciate that. Um, the mayor will be here shortly. He's um, tied up at City Hall, so I'll be starting the meeting, but I don't, I don't believe I'll be finishing it. So um, could everyone please join me to salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you for attending. I see we have a very large group this evening, and uh, I welcome your attendance. Um, we start off the meeting with the hearing of visitors. Uh, we do have some visitors that have signed in. I'm going to take uh, one of the visitors out of order. Uh, former school committee member Andy Robinson is here with his beautiful daughter who has a short attention span. So we're going to let, we're going to let, I thought, yeah, I'm talking about Andy has the short attention span, but um, good point, Madam Superintendent. So Mr. Robinson, welcome back. We're nice to see you. The floor is yours. As you know, you have three minutes of uninterrupted speech. I won't even take that long. I know there's a lot of people here to speak on this issue tonight, and I appreciate um, having the opportunity to speak out of turn. She's way past her bedtime, but um, I'm here to, to speak um, to the Barrett Russell tonight. And I know um, firsthand kind of the, the challenges you all are facing in making budget decisions in this year, and I understand um, all the reasons why the Barrett Russell is in the position it is in regards to the decisions that you're being asked to make. Um, it, I, there's no way I could not come and speak. Um, I, you know, there, it, it's been such a special place to me. The Barrett Russell was brought back online during my time on the school committee. Um, it's been an amazing place. It was my, I, I loved every experience I had in every school that I was in, but it was, it was the very best place that I enjoyed the very most and invested a, a lot of personal time and energy there. Um, the school committee invested a lot in that building and, and in that space, in the staff, um, and in the culture there. And um, that investment, in my opinion and my experience, has paid dividends over and over and over again. And it would be, um, it would be sad um, if it had, if the, the position you're in in this budget resulted in a decision that resulted in the close of the Barrett Russell. And, uh, you know, it's a place for our youngest learners. And uh, the, the money and the time and the energy we invest in, in those learners uh, will never be wasted, ever. Um, and, and being a resident of Ward 2 and a repre an, an elected representative of Ward 2 for four years, what that school means to that neighborhood is um, of, of equal and uncomparable value as well. Um, you know, I'm sure Natalie will talk when, when she has the opportunity, but when that school opened, families and, and homeowners in that neighborhood without kids showed up and hugged teachers and, and staff and custodians for just being there and being present and changing what was not a, not a great place for, for some time. And uh, so I just, I, I appeal to you to do everything that you can and everything that's within your power um, to, to find some way to, um, you know, hang on to the investment and the value that, that exists in the Barrett Russell. Um, and, and certainly, you know, I offer myself as much as I can as a resource to any one of you who would, who would like to talk or, or understand better. I would love to visit the Barrett Russell with you if you haven't been there already. Um, it is still my very favorite place to go in the district. Um, and that, that is not a slight on any other school. Um, so I, I thank you for your time, and I'm sure you'll hear a, a lot from a lot of other people. Um, but, you know, continue to do your best, and, and that's all I ask. You know, we gave you, uh, we gave you, we extended Next the courtesy. Time we talk for two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't believe that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next on the list is uh, Ms. Joanne Camillo. Well, thank you very much. 
much. I need my glasses. I'm blind now. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I just wanted to let you know I was encouraged by some of the members to bring some photos of the school, so I did bring those photos. If you want to pass them around and look at them, you're welcome. And I did bring a few letters from some of our parents. I made copies for you, um, so I'll leave these here, maybe with Lisa, if that's all right with you. Okay. Thank you. I also have a flash drive. If you want to see a lot of pictures, we can just put them right up. Um, but I only have three minutes, so I'll start from here. Um, hello, I'm Joanne Camillo. I am the principal of the Barrett Russell. And if I may, I want to present my staff. Staff, please stand. This is my entire staff. You have teachers, you have paraprofessionals, you have our administrative secretary, we have our speech therapist, we have our occupational therapist, we have our nurse, we have our school adjustment counselors, we have our administrators. So I'm very happy and I'm very grateful that they're here. And I just wanted to share a little bit with you about our Barrett Russell Learning Community and how wonderful it is and how we partner with a lot of our community providers. Um, we have partnerships with the South Shore Conservatory and they come over, they have music specialists who come to our building once a week, they go into everything excuse me, every single class, and they work with our children tying music to early literacy skills. We have partnerships with Bridgewater State University. They send their kids over to do the STEM, um, so which is science, technology, engineering, and math. So we have um, student teachers from Bridgewater. We have the Stonehill students who come over as well. We're, we have a partnership with the Stonehill. We have the GBH Community Garden um, grant that we have to help us sustain our garden in the back, our Peace Garden, um, which really is a wonderful place. If you haven't come over yet, please do. We'll have a garden party in June and you'll all be invited. Um, we have a dental program where the children get sealants on their teeth and they check for cavities. We have the breakfast in the classroom. Every child has breakfast every day to help them to start off so that they can be the best learners that they can be. Um, I do want to, I'm just repeating things that I've heard earlier, that we definitely have been woven into the fabric of the neighborhood. Um, it is a safe place to come. When you, if you come after school or if you come in the, um, during the weekend time, you will notice that the fields are being used. There's, there are socket nets out there. There are brand new bleachers out there, all for the families to use. Years ago, you really pr probably wouldn't set foot in that field. Um, but right now, every day, we see parents out there. We see children's out, out, uh, children out there. We see other people. Um, we have a little um, group of volleyball players. They bring their net. They really do. They bring their nets out, and they set them up, um, and they play volleyball. And these are grown men. These aren't children. And their children and their wives you know, use the climbing structure, or they um, kind of support them out there. So we're very pleased with that. Um, and what I would like you to remember as you're thinking, and I know you're very thoughtful about the decisions you have to make, is um, what worries us is if we put in our million dollar windows, and then we board them up, how long is it going to take for unsavory element to move back in? Once they realize that the school is empty and not used, my fear is, unfortunately, I think um, bad things could happen and other folks could kind of take back the neighborhood and that would be a terrible thing with all of the investment that has been made um, to date. And I just want to say, um, at the Barrett Russell, we, we are the Barrett Russell and we are small, but we are mighty and we hope that we hope that you vote, um, you know, for the best. Thank you. Okay. Next on our list is Ms. Claire Sheehan. Welcome, Claire. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, Mr. Minicello, ladies and gentlemen of the school committee. My name is Claire Sheehan, a lifelong Brocktonian, a resident of Ward 1, and a teacher at the Barrett Russell School. I truly understand that you have difficult decisions ahead of you regarding the FY17 budget, and I realize that you do not take these responsibilities lightly. We come before you today simply to share some information with you regarding the Barrett Russell School on Oakdale Street. This little school is a hidden gem in our city. It is tucked away in the neighborhood between Pleasant and Prospect Streets. As you heard, it was renovated a few years ago and reopened as a kindergarten center. While the building is beautiful, and we certainly love being an integral part of the neighborhood, 
It is what goes on inside the building that excites us the most. The Barrett Russell administration, faculty, staff, parents and students work together as a community in every sense of the word. You may have heard the saying, in harmony, small things grow. Well, at the Barrett Russell, we work in harmony to make small things grow every single day. We are truly one united school, working together for the success of our precious little students. We realize that our students benefit when we work together as one united body. As Mother Teresa said, I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. But together, we can do great things. We work together every single day to do the best for our students and help them grow as learners because we know that together, anything is possible. Theodore Seuss Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss, said, you may be one person to the world, but to one person, you may be the world. Our Barrett Russell students and families are our world. Please don't take that world away. Thank you for your time and attention. Good evening, thank you. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, Mr. Minicello, and school committee members. <clears throat> I'm here tonight as a parent, but also as a Brockton educator to speak about the proposal to close the Barrett Russell School. This school year, I was able to take advantage of the opportunity to enroll my daughter in the Brockton Public School System. Being an employee here for over 15 years, I saw this as a benefit because I truly believe in the quality of education that our school system offers each and every child. I've seen students succeed through the years and have been a proud attendee on graduation day at Brockton High School for some of my former students. Simply said, I believe in Brockton and it's in philosophy of education. Since September, my daughter has flourished at the Barrett Russell. She has made incredible academic gain, formed social relationships among her peers and created bonds with many of the staff there. When I pick her up from school each day, she doesn't want to leave. <laughs> I know that at the Barrett, everyone that she comes into contact with makes her feel safe, cared for, and genuinely wants to see her succeed. I know that the teachers at the Barrett share the same philosophy of education. Every child counts. Every child is important. To me, that is what having a Brockton education is about. This is why I chose to have her here. I strongly believe that the primary years are the most fundamental years of a child's education. Having the Barrett Russell open not only provides that, but the school itself means a lot to the community, the parents, and most of all, the students who attend. This little hidden gem of a school, only open just a short amount of time, has been one of the first educational experiences for so many of our students. I think that this school and the dedicated staff who work there have made an impact on the lives of so many of our future Brighton and High School graduates. We as educators know why we're here to make an impact, to make a difference in the lives of children. I plead with you to please reconsider any proposals of closing in the Barrett Russell School. Thank you very much for your time and letting me speak tonight. Okay, thank, thanks to all of the visitors. We uh, move on to what's called the consent agenda, the consent agenda is routine business of the school committee and um, that is voted on in a block at this time uh, any school committee member can motion to remove an item for um, discussion is there anyone that would like to remove any particular item okay seeing none then can I have a motion from someone from the floor to um, approve the consent agenda Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, great. Okay, uh, a communication. The mayor is not here, 
but um, the mayor has made a request that the school committee considered at the last finance subcommittee um, and that request was for the uh, summer program um, that the mayor strongly supports um, in which all of the school committee members um, voted on uh, to approve a donation from Chartwells uh, for the community outreach program and um, as he discussed in, in detail at that last subcommittee meeting uh, it's a very beneficial program for so many of our kids in the summer to um, have something positive for them to be involved with. Um, Madam Superintendent, would you like to comment on that? I would. Uh, as usual, um, this is uh, money that would be coming, uh, as it has every summer, from Chartwells, who is actually here this evening uh, to present to you another donation. They're wonderful partners, but I've actually been told that it's not 15000 It's uh, it was actually 20000 and there's an extra 5000 in there, and we've got a number of other programs. We have Brockton After Dark, we have transportation to the pools for some of the children that are in the playgrounds during the summer. So we're very pleased, not only, I believe, the 15000 but it's a $20,000 donation. Okay, so then um, that would mean that we have some time to allocate to an additional resources, the, five, the additional 5000 correct? Yes. Okay, so um, is there any further discussion on this item? No? Um, then can I have a motion from the floor to approve the donation from Chartwells to the Community Outreach Fund for the Brockton Summer Parks Initiative as requested by Mayor Carpenter? You can, you, you can say so moved. Uh, huh? You can say so moved. So moved. Okay, great. <laughs> Wanda, you have that language. Yes. Mr. Sullivan, thank you for seconding that motion. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay, thank you, unanimous. All right, report of the superintendent of schools. Good evening, I think I wanna start by uh, first of all complimenting uh, the staff from the Barrett Russell, the administration. Uh, as I said, um, it certainly is a wonderful place, certainly for our families, our children, and, and their dedication is noted by all of us um, this past week we actually had our blitz for Brockton Children Count and um, the Barrett Russell was there in force you know with everything that they were dealing with they still came as a unified body supporting students uh, throughout the district so I, I want to compliment them uh, on their professionalism and coming before us and sharing you know their thoughts uh, going forward on the Brockton uh, Kids Count um, coming here, I have to tell you how wonderful it was. I pull out a Central, I have about 10 minutes to get here, and these were not other administrators or people leaving Central. As I drove around, I kept encountering cars with their bumper stickers on them. So it's really exciting when you dri drive around and you see this kind of community action you know, taking place. And I have to tell you a cute story. I was out last evening and I ran into, many of you know, uh, Maureen and Steve Pike that live on West Street. So you've got a major thoroughfare there, and they happen to have at their home one of the larger signs that you're now seeing you know, throughout the city. And they were talking about their little five-year-old grandson who was attending Brockton Kindergarten as, an, as excited all over the city to continue to read Brockton Kids Count. There's Brockton Kids Count. And was very excited to say to his grandparents, you have the biggest sign in the city. So this means something to our kids. When our kids are out there, you know, realizing that the community has come together. And as I said, this isn't just a budget issue. This is going forward an advocacy issue, really informing our parents so they are our partners in talking to us about what they want for their kids, advocating with our legislative group, our elected officials, and talking as a community going forward about what we want for our children. So again, there, there's a lot to come of this. Um, we've met with a number of people that want to get involved. Businesses are supporting us. Uh, and this is good for the schools in so many ways. So I'm not sure why it took us so long, because I know looking out there, we all believe that Brockton Kids Count, and many of us have believed that our whole career. So you know, thank you to everybody. I see this as such a win you know, for our children. And let me close by saying, before I turn it over to Bermain from the high school, your juniors went to their junior prom this past Friday night, I believe. 
and one of the pictures that they sent and I think it's on our Facebook page are your high school students looking just beautiful in their gowns and their tuxes holding up the signs that say Brockton kids count so certainly you know from your littlest children you know to our largest children uh, the message the message is loud and clear so thank you to the community um, just on that note we, um, we had a meeting for some of you that weren't here earlier and we discussed it briefly we had a meeting in, on Beacon Hill and um, our campaign is gaining traction um, Beacon Hill is aware of where Brockton is Beacon Hill is aware of uh, the feeling of the parents of the community um, so we can't promise anything at this point but all I can say to you with assurance is that um, people up there are listening and, and know what's going on here in Brockton and know that um, the people of Brockton aren't sitting idling, idly and just going to take uh, what we all determine and to us is clear that um, the funding formula is flawed and it needs to be tweaked. Um, so your efforts are having an impact. Uh, our efforts, I mean, we're, we're in this together. Um, you know, the administration, the school committee, the city, our elected officials, you know, we're all in a tough spot, but we're all in this together because we all want what's best for this community. And, um, you know, this advocacy program, I think, is having an impact and is going to force them to basically look at the way Chapter 70 is funded um, because we are not going to just sit back and, and, and keep our mouths shut because it's just unfair. What we in Brockton provide to so many students in terms of opportunities, in terms of a great education, uh, an education that places our students um, in any fine educational institution in this country. Um, what we accomplish together uh, is amazing. And, um, you know, they understand that. And um, we're going to just continue on. We're not going to give up. And um, we'll see where this, this ends up. But, um, you know, cross your fingers and, and come on board with us because we're not going to give up. Brockton does not give up. So, all right, Madam Superintendent, we have a nice report from one of our students. So, uh, the seniors are at the end. We did have our last um, senior assembly yesterday. Um, second, the senior prom tickets are being sold this week. The last day is tomorrow. Um, cap and gowns will begin. Be, will begin being sold next week, next on Tuesday. The last day for the seniors is May 25th. Uh, the spring musical Footloose will be presented next week, um, the 13th and the 14th at 7.30 p.m. and the 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, MCAS testing for the sophomores, the math will be May 17th and May 18th. Uh, the Harbor One art show is going on right now in the Fine Arts Lobby, so please stop by to look at them. Um, it's from this week until Thursday. The award ceremony for the art show is Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, we also wanted to congratulate Obina Ibakwe. He did get into seven of, out of the eight Ivy League, Ivy League schools that he applied to. Uh, junior prom was last Friday. It was very <laughs> successful. Uh, dining out for the JROTC is Thursday evening at the Shaw Center at 5.30 p.m. And lastly, today is Teacher Appreciation Day, so on behalf of the students, I wanted to say thank you to all the teachers in the district. I think I realized that it's Teacher Appreciation Week. So congratulations to all our teachers sitting out there. You are very much appreciated. Uh, great that the students uh, I'll share that with our teachers. So, Bermaine, I have to ask you a couple of things. Are you counting down? Yes, 17 more days. Left. <laughs> and I have to tell the school committee, we've had a lot of fun with this. My first year uh, when I was elected to come on board as superintendent, um, I was invited to go to the senior prom. I haven't missed it since. It's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's at the, is it the Put Putnam Center at uh, Gillette? Yeah. Uh, Putnam Pavilion, I think it's called, at Gillette Stadium. Um, it's just a wonderful night, and when I tell you all kids are there, you know, our seniors, uh, including our special needs youngsters, you have to come and see all of the students. Uh, they absolutely look beautiful. It's a wonderful night for all of you. So hopefully if you get an opportunity to 
to come and uh, take a look. You'll, you'll see the wonderful things happening as they uh, wind down as our students uh, at Brockton High School. We're very proud of so many of the things you said. Uh, o o is it, am I saying his name right? O o Obina? Obina. So I had the opportunity to meet Obina with uh, high school seniors at my last listening tour with the seniors. Uh, this past Thursday we had a luncheon. Uh, they have so much to offer. There's a lot of insight as far as things that we can actually learn from our students going forward to better our school system. Uh, he talked quite a bit about community service and all of those hours that all of you, you know, chalk up, you know, before you leave uh, Brockton. And uh, Principal Wolder, is it all right to announce his selection? He has selected Harvard. Uh, so we get to keep him here in Massachusetts. Uh, congratulations not only to our student, but certainly to all our seniors that are getting accepted to wonderful colleges. And I do have to say, and we're, so, we're always so proud of Brockton High, but Obina was with us and actually attended, I think it's the Arnone and the Plouffe Academy. So he's a youngster that was with us for many years in the Brockton Public Schools. So again, teacher appreciation, you know, this is what you do for our students, position them for great success. So thank you very much, honey. Okay, and moving on, um, our first presentation tonight uh, will be Chartwells. I'll invite them to come up and to share with us, I think, some good news. I'm not sure. Uh, Mr. Burke, are we doing a PowerPoint or are we just speaking? No, just speaking. Okay. Thank you, Linda. I kind of put Linda on the spot, but that's okay. Um, we want to hear from you, Tom. We want to hear from Linda. <laughs> exactly. I'm here tonight to um, talk about a program that. Um, Blessing in the Backpack that started um, back in 2004, in December, of two, excuse me, December 2014. I was asked to attend a meeting with um, former school committee member Andy Robinson, Principal Brian Rogan, um, Megan Schoenberg, and her mother, Janet McDuffie, um, at the Kennedy School. And at that meeting, we talked about the program Blessing in the Backpack and, and what the program was, was doing. And at that time, they were, um, it was two schools. It was the Kennedy School and the Barrett Russell School. Um, and, and I was amazed listening to, to Janet and, and to Megan tell this story about um, how and why they started this program. And, and I will kind of go about what the back, backpack program is. The program started in Megan's basement. Um, and they, they took funding from their, their personal family funding and also some small donations and they purchased food. Um, Megan would go and, and Janet would, um, would, they would go to the grocery store, buy some food, pack it up and bring it on Fridays to the Kennedy School and to Bat Russell and pass it out to students that were in need um, that didn't have, you know, no food for the weekends. So um, at that point, um, they were looking, I think the program was outgrowing Megan's basement, and I, at least she kind of wanted her room back. Um, so we talked about maybe bringing it up to the high school, and, and with the support of uh, Superintendent uh, Smith, uh, Director of Operations Mike Thomas, Chief of Budget um, Aldo Petrano, and Andy Robinson, um, we got approval to move the program from Megan's basement up to Brockton High School. Um, February 2015, we first started um, our first packing, um, and and I was amazed again the the um, how the program went from day one. Um, Megan, Janet, and um, Jamie, who's a teacher at the Kennedy School, um, and a small army of volunteers met at the high school, and they meet every about four to six weeks, um, and they pack meals out, um, and it's it's. And actually, they're doing it, I believe, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. If anyone would ever want to come up and see it, it's, it's quite, quite um, a task to, to organize and, and get everything ready. Um, but they've, they've got it down to a science. Um, and the program had grown from the two schools to now that it's at seven schools here in Brockton. Um, and there are 300 students this weekend. Will, they'll be packing for 300 students, um, Brockton students that need um, the services. Um, once the meals are packed, labeled, and dated, um, they're placed on a pallet, and we store them here at the high school. And then every Friday, um, our, our food service drivers take the, the weekly um, 
pallets, uh, excuse me, the weekly containers and drop it off at the seven schools. And then they hand it out on Friday afternoon to students before they get on the bus. Um, the, st the students will come down, they, they grab their, their back pack and they go out into, into the bus. And this is food that they will have for the weekend. Um, and and uh, when, I, when I first started the program, I was like, you know, this, Megan, we had some conversations about you know, funding and it was, um, really wanted to see the program growing. So last summer, we, every August we have a um, summer meeting and it's, it's with um, our, our opening meeting with our food service staff. It's, it's all the managers from, from each cafeteria comes in and we meet and we go over different um, new programs, new pricing, anything that's happening for food service for the following school year. And one of the things that we brought up was, um, and, and we just kind of threw it out there and we asked them, who would like to do a dress down Friday? And part of the program was, if, if, they, if they participated in the dress down Friday, they would have to donate $1. Um, and there was probably 25 or 30, and we met here, and there was probably about 25 or 30 of them, and every hand went up. It was, as soon as we said it, every hand went up, and I, I was amazed, but in some ways, but in others I wasn't, because the ladies during the summer, um, they, we, as you were saying earlier, that um, we feed the students that are living in the hotels and, and breakfast and lunch. And they, we have several of the groups that go out to yard sales and look, and look for donations and, and come back on Monday mornings with their vans and their cars full of toys and clothes and they bring it to the hotels at lunch. And when they're passing out their lunch to the students, they're giving them toys and wh whatever they can find on the weekends from yard sales and donating to, to the group. And, and, and the, other, the other thing that I found out just recently, we had one um, school lunch um, staff member that took their longevity check this winter um, and went, went out and, and bought, her, she actually want, she uh, spent the summer in one of the hotels, she, she bought all the kids presents and, and, and basically took her whole longevity check bought everyone presents and donated the presents to the kids that, that were living in the hotels. So, um, so it didn't surprise me that we, ha we had that participation. So what happens is each Friday, all of our staff members, um, including the Chartwells group, um, they donate a dollar and they, they can wear whatever they want. Within reason, there were some regulations. We had hair nets and safety shoes and some of the things that are required. Um, and, we, we first started, open, when we did it the first week, we were like, oh, that's, you know, it was nice. We had a, a nice little um, opening day and everybody kind of enjoyed it. Um, now, and I, if I can ask Linda, I, I don't think we could take the program away, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it was that, um, they all, the, the program has grown um, and, and, and we've been lucky that we've, we've really had a, a great participation in, and most of us, a lot of our staff, won't wear um, or won't come in in their uh, clothes that they wear outside, especially some of the cooks, because they're afraid, you know, when they're getting, they're mixing in the taco or the chili, whatever it is. So they wear the uniform, but they still donate the dollar every week. Um, so I, I would like at this point in time ask that the food service staff, and it's okay, Superintendent, if the food service staff and, and Janet would come forward, would we have a, a small gift that we can give? Janet, can you come down? And, uh, anybody want Debbie in the food service set? Please come.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's a big community and, you know, Brockton has heart. We um, are a community that steps up when people are in trouble or in need and there's a cause. That's one thing about Brocktonians, they step up. If, if, you've, if you are out of the city, you're on vacation somewhere and you run into someone from Brockton or someone knows someone from Brockton, it's an unbelievably positive, great conversation about you know what a great community is what great people they are it's 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 a it, it's a consistent trend Brocktonians get it done and that's why um, I love this community and I have to say for those of you uh, I've been out there on a Saturday and it's amazing to me that you know we see Tom Burke here you know all week long he lives on the North Shore but he is there packing those boxes on a Saturday with other family members you know, brings them here, and it is quite an operation, you know, to see volunteers coming together. I know they can always use volunteers. I think a number of our uh, different children's group, Girl Scout groups, there's been different groups that have come, you know, to help for the packing. But uh, it, it certainly makes us think when there are children in our hotels that that's the difference between eating and not eating for a weekend. So, again, thank you to everybody. You know, Janet, it's one of those things that, you know, you came up with an idea, saw it, I think, in another community, uh, and you and your daughters were able to bring, I mean, I can remember you coming before us, and, and not that it surprised me that we needed that type of a program, but to now look at serving over 300 children, and unfortunately, there are a lot more children to serve, and you know what, Janet, I know you'll end up doubling that number, if not tripling that number, so thank you to your family for supporting, uh, as you always have, the kids in Brockton. Uh, hey, every year we have a introduction, Madam Superintendent. Well, I'd like to invite Dr. Kathleen Moran to come down, uh, our Executive Director of Human Resources. And, and this is, uh, with all of the difficulty we have, this is one of the really great things uh, about, about your job as school committee welcoming a new group of administrative interns. Thank you. Good evening. I have the pleasure this evening of in, in, congratulating and introducing the group of 2016 administrative interns who have been selected from um, the educators who applied to that um, great long-standing program that we have. Um, their internship began last week with visits and interviews across the city. Um, during last week, they visited Project Grads, the Parent Information Center, and the following schools, Gilmore, Plouffe, East, George, Keith, Goddard, and Davis. So I will now introduce this well-traveled and very tired group of individuals. Um, first, we have Gloria Cho, English language acquisition coach in the bilingual department. Ms. Cho will be working with Dr. Barbara Lovell, principal of the Ashfield Middle School, and Dr. Sal Tarasi, executive director of pupil personnel. Next, we have Caitlin Clark, math teacher at Brockton High School. Ms. Clark will be working with Kevin Cairo, principal of South Middle School, and um, good luck, Dr. Kathleen Moran, the executive director of Human Resources. Sorry. Uh, next, we have Kerry Clark, adjustment counselor at Champion School. 
Ms. Clark will be working with Natalie Pohl, Principal of the George School, and Dan Vigent, Director of Technology Services. Next, we have John Garsha, art teacher at Brockton High School. Mr. Garsha will be working with Dr. Kelly Silva, Principal of East Middle School, and Eileen McQuaid, Coordinator of Reading and Language Arts in the Office of Teaching and Learning. Next, we have John Lynch, math teacher at the Ashfield School. Mr. Lynch will be working with Elaine Alves, Brockton High School Interim Housemaster, and Dr. Ethan Cancel, Executive Director of Assessment and Account Accountability. Next, we have Melissa McNeil Pleasant, Guidance Counselor at Brockton High School. Ms. McNeil Pleasant will be working with Cynthia Burns, Interim Principal of the Keith Center, and Kelly Jones, Director of the Bilingual Department. Susan Nash, Elementary Technology Teacher at the George School. Ms. Nash will be working with Colleen Proudler, Principal of the Arnone School, and Dr. Heather Ronan, Coordinator of Math and Science in the Office of Teaching and Learning. Next we have Carrie Pearson, Grade 1 Teacher at the Davis School. Ms. Pearson will be working with Carol McGrath, Principal of the Raymond School, and Dr. Julianne Andrade, Coordinator of Reading and Language Arts in the Office of Teaching and Learning. And finally we have Rachel Umbriana, Spanish teacher at Brockton High School. Ms. Umbriana will be working with Michelle Nazarella, Principal of the Pluff Academy, and Dr. Sal Tarasi, Executive Director of Pupil Personnel. And I welcome all of you and thank you very much for your participation. Congratulations. So the school committee will be pleased that when you look at your administrative interns for uh, 2016, you've got some working on your policies. Uh, you've got them obviously working uh, out in the schools. I've already seen them busy with PARC that started this week. Um, they're, they're very busy. They're at desks. They're talking to me about their projects. And uh, again, this is a grow your own program. So it's, it's one of a kind. Uh, when you talk about you know, filling administrative positions, they have an opportunity to see if this fits their career path. And at the same time, they get to see the whole operation. So the most interesting thing to me is you know, sitting here and having been in the district a, a long time and obviously having been in a number of jobs, when I hear them talk to me about, I didn't realize this program existed or I enjoyed seeing what's happening at the middle school or the high school, this is terrific for our district, for our teachers to come together, to get a flavor if they've been at the high school of what's happening at a middle school or an elementary, or hopefully what you're going to see at central administration is there's very little downtime. So we welcome you and uh, I'm sure they'll be sharing a lot of things with us. Last week we got them right into the swing of things with the Brockton Kids Count. They were out in force. They were helping Michelle uh, who had so many things on her plate and I already know Michelle they made a huge difference last Wednesday with the photo shoot and uh, again thank you. I'd like to congra congratulate everybody, uh, especially the folks that I know. Very proud to see you guys up there, especially John fellow class of 98 graduate of Brockton High. Nice to see a lot of Brockton High grads there too. Um, and just a few words of encouragement. I'm wrapping up an administrative internship. Um, it's very tough, uh, but it's definitely worth it. So enjoy the grind. <laughs> okay. All right, and moving on, we have our school presentation. Uh, by Principal Barbara Lovell, and you know Ashfield, again, is one of our middle schools we brought online after we uh, moved to the Baker School. We changed the Ashfield for many years, being an elementary school, to a wonderful middle school, uh, right in the middle of, obviously, the Ashfield neighborhood. Um, it's a school that is highly selected. Uh, you know, again, wonderful teachers. It's one of our online park schools, which actually began this week. So we're thrilled to invite you, and I know you do have a PowerPoint, correct? So thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the time to talk a little bit about our school, and I'll try and keep it brief. I'll be respectful of your time. I know that you have a long night ahead of you. Um, I did it wrong. Yes. So we have about 500 kids in the school. It's grades 6 through 8. We have three city resource rooms with about 37 students. Um, we have an EI program um, in each of the grades, and we also have a large um, SEI population. So it's about 
20% uh, of our school is special ed, about 20% of our school is SEI, um, and it's a really nice mix. Um, we work really hard to make sure that um, everyone is included. We have a very inclusive school. All the SEI students, the special education students are integrated for all their specials. They're integrated during electives and lunch and recess. We make sure that no, there aren't any uh, tables where there's any one population of kids so that everyone plays together freely and um, eats together, talks together, and works together in any areas that they can. We hold all of our students to a very high rigorous standard. We make sure that whether you're in a special education classroom or an advanced classroom, all students try and meet that same standard. We have more support for the students who need it. Um, but you'll see graphing equations in the special ed room. You'll see it in the uh, top eighth grade classroom as well. So you're going to see uh, very hard te uh, teachers working very hard um, to make sure all the kids have the same opportunities to learn. Um, recently, we've uh, been recognized for our grab and grow breakfast program. We're going to the State House on May 5th. We're going to be receiving an award. We have over 80% of our students who'll be eat who eat breakfast every day. We use the grab and go model as opposed to breakfast in the classroom. That means that the students pick up their breakfast on their way into the building and they can eat it during announcements or on their way in, in starting their first period class. Um, it saves a lot more time and we found that it works better with middle school students than the breakfast in the classroom model, at least for our school. Our Empower Yourself program, I think you are aware how um, many awards those students are getting. They're going to the State House again on May 18th to receive more awards. They're one of the only middle school programs, um, along with North Middle School, that uh, in our state that actually has financial literacy as part of um, their program. Uh, the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, we've done a lot of improvements with health. We're up for a bronze award. And the Massachusetts Aggression Reduction uh, Center at Bridgewater State has given our girls uh, leadership uh, no numerous awards for their work in um, anti-bullying. The school plays, the last two years we've had amazing school plays. They've been featured in the newspaper with pig picture spreads, um, Annie, and then last year, Oklahoma. This year we're doing High School Musical, and um, it'll be the first week in June. Um, we work with Jackie Parenta, who's the choreographer for the high school play. She also teaches science in our school, so we've got her um, roped into doing that for free for us. So um, there's a lot of great things happening. As it was mentioned, we are a park computer school. Um, we do have computer carts in um, many of the classrooms, and each cart has about 25 tablets. The students are able to do their uh, daily schoolwork in many rooms on those um, computers. We've added some classes to help um, improve typing. As you know, most of the kids with their texting just use their thumbs, so we've got to get them back to using the whole keyboard. Um, and they are going to take their test on um, PARC on the computer. Um, this will be the second year we've been working hard to try and improve uh, that sort of implementation dip that a lot of the schools that took it on computer experienced. So we're hoping that um, this year we're going to really um, knock it out of the park. So every day we have electives at our school. It's one of the things that makes us a little bit different. During the last period of the day when some students are in band and chorus, we have a media literacy class that students from Stonehill College come and run. The students in their communication department come and uh, to work with our kids. We have the Empire Yourself program is worked into the day. We also have physical um, fitness activities like Zumba, walking, yoga, some CrossFit. We have backyard sports, flag football, playground games, and ultimate frisbee. We have a newspaper group, a student council, girls leadership. And then we also offer academic support programs in math and um, ELA. We have a reader's corner for students that just like uh, to share stories and computers, and again, that's when band, chorus, and some of our art programs meet. Those are all extra things that teachers do during the last um, 40 minutes of the day. We also, during that time, have a credit recovery class, so any student who fails, we have three terms in our school, so anyone who fails a class, either term one or term two, they're assigned to credit recovery instead of an elective. Um, the subject teacher gathers 10 to 12 assignments that represent the most important skills and concepts from the failed term. The students work with a teacher who's either an ELA social studies teacher or a math science teacher, and they redo those assignments and bring their grades back up to passing, and then they're allowed to move forward. We found that this to be a lot more successful. I was in a 
initial class when Mike Thomas and Sharon were working on it for the high school, thought it sounded like a great idea. So we brought it down to the middle school and uh, this model is really great because then the students are able to bring their grade up right away and they don't have to wait for summer school and try and um, gain, uh, you know, miss all the things that are coming up because they failed the first term. So we try and fill those gaps in right away and then they make a lot more progress second and third term. So it's been really successful. Um, every Monday, um, the students have uh, an opportunity during that elective block to make up any uh, homework that they missed. We have a lot of students who take a bus, um, whether it's uh, homeless or uh, just that they live in a different part of the city. It's hard for parents to get all the way over to our neighborhood, pick them up. We find that um, giving them that opportunity to make up those assignments on Monday has been really a good idea. And on Wednesdays, <coughs> excuse me, and on Wednesdays we do a second steps lesson. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, this program was come from Mary Ellen Crane. It's based on a um, social skills program. The students use, um, thanks, Choices magazines, the second steps curriculum, uh, the Not My Kid materials, and the movie Bully. And they work on a lot of different lessons like anti-bullying, empathy, social media use and misuse, um, etiquette, respect for veterans, seniors, and how to build a voice to speak out appropriately um, in difficult situations. I mean, we want kids to be upstanders and we want them to stand up for themselves. We also don't want them to cause a greater problem. So it's a really trying to teach them how to be um, uh, an advocate for themselves and their friends without causing a bigger problem. All right, and some of the things we do, I think that it's really important to get kids out into the community and to find um, opportunities where they can learn outside the building. So this year, the seventh grade has been to the Museum of Science. They went to the um, Omni Theater for an env environmental science movie, and they also saw the exhibits. The Empower Yourself program has been to BSU, Bridgewater State. They've been to Bentley, the Federal Reserve. They go into the State House. Grade 8 has been to Gillette Stadium for a presentation on concussions, and then they created improvements in helmet design. Uh, grade 8 went to Newton um, to a movie theater there to see the Malala movie. That was totally grant funded, the movie and the buses. Um, grade 6, 7, and 8, the SEI students went to the Mass State Archives for a simulated archaeology dig based on the big dig. We go to City Lab with all the grade 8 students. Every student in the school gets to go on that. And the two advanced seventh graders also went for a, for a second trip. Um, the girls' leadership has been to a peer leader conference and to the MARC um, conference. The SEI students are going to perform at Haitian Flag Day at City Hall. And our city resource students take frequent uh, community trips using public transportation. They go to the uh, markets, they go to the park, and they do different things around town to learn um, skills needed to really survive in the city. Okay, and these are just some pictures. Of course, this is with you guys. That's our Empower Yourself group. That's our girls group at Bridgewater State. Again. Um, we had uh, from the uh, Quebec consulate, we had a rap singer come. He was wonderful. He talked to the students about being an advocate for themselves and um, he presented for the whole school. It was really wonderful. These are a couple of photos from our art classes. You can see kids all working together, lots of different places. This is our banner for winning first place in breakfast. But this is another, just some examples here. There are a few pictures of the kids in the classroom using the tablets. Each student has the tablet. They sign out at the beginning of class. They use it throughout the class. They put it back, plug it back in. They come in a cart so the teacher can push them from one room to the next. There are about two for every grade that we can move around and they sign them out. They're in use most of the time. This is an example of a science. They did a, a DNA um, experiment in their science class. We really try and make the kids active learners. This was at Gillette Stadium. They filled these um, styrofoam plates with sensors, and if they had to drop a weight on top of the um, thing from a distance, and if it crashed and broke the sensor, then they failed. So they all had to work together to form these um, hopefully safer um, helmets, but it was a lot of fun. It's a bunch of them. 
And again, at the Mass State Archives, these are some of our SEI students who went there. There were a lot of presentations that they listened to. And then they also went and found these um, different artifacts, and then they had to de uh, determine what kinds of life, uh, what kinds of lives these people led, what activities they did, um, and it, they all really enjoyed getting out and seeing um, some different um, activities. This was at the Museum of Science, some seventh graders. That's a pig race that we had for all the students that um, earned points throughout the term. And these, this is at the live trading room at Bentley. These are our students trading. Um, one of our sixth graders actually scored, made the most money. So I think I'm going to turn over any money I have to him. <laughs> um, oh, Chartwells uh, did help us um, get the uh, tables up. These are in our, uh, right off the side of our cafeteria. The kids can go out there and eat if they like to when the weather's good. Um, hasn't quite been warm enough yet to start it back up, but we'll be doing that soon. And again, um, one of our, uh, that's our health teacher. We do a lot of hands-on lessons and active lessons. She taught the kids about the circulatory system. They actually move through and picking up oxygen cards and dropping off waste cards. But we really try pushing science at our school. We have a science lab um, through the Gelfand grant. And that's for everyone, um, even our city resource room. Everyone competes in the science fair. And um, I think that overall, it's a great place. So thank you. Okay. Very nice presentation. Thank you. <coughs> Quick question about um, the tablets. Mm -hmm. um, you said that uh, how many how many tablet cards I guess do you have in the school? We have six right now. Uh, actually, we have seven. Okay, um, and uh, are they always in use? Pretty much. And um, um, uh, John Lynch, actually, who's over here, he created a on the Google Drive um, a sign out so that all the teachers can log on. They sign in the periods that they want, which cart, and then we move them around. There are two upstairs that we don't have an elevator, so they stay upstairs. Right. But the rest are wheeled from place to place. Yeah. So. In terms of, um, obviously, the students and using those, would, how, how beneficial would you say they are in terms of uh, applying the application in the curriculum, you know, in, in basically, you know, modern times? The, it, this is exactly what they're going to need to do for the rest of their lives, most likely. I can't imagine um, heading off to high school and college without having, being able to do this. Um, they can access all kinds of websites. The Discovery Tech Book for Science, most of their science work is online that they can access. They have um, Discovery Ed also in social studies. They have a, a bunch of different sites that teachers have created. Um, they have uh, simulations in math that they can use, and they take those, that information, they're able to um, use an equation editor to enter their information, um, and they can simulate um, park-like testing um, as well as all the research that they're doing. Uh, um, the teachers have uploaded um, uh, their text into the, into the screen so the students can highlight and read and save right on, um, right on the tablet. So it's been a really good thing, but I think it, it goes back to the teachers have done a really good job of making making the tablets useful for the kids. They they create lessons that the kids need to interact with the with the material. Is it a combination of tablets and laptops or just tablets? It's mostly tablets. Okay. With the, you know they the tablets with the, the keyboard. Yeah, with the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if if you had a wish list, would would your school benefit from more? tablets? Of course. Okay. Absolutely, yes. We could. They're in use all the time. In fact, um, it gets to the point where, um, you know, we, we have to tell, the, you know, not to take somebody else's name off and put their name on. They, had, they want them all the time. They're always in use. It's great. So you, there's about 500 students? Yes. And how many tablets total in the school, would you say, there are on the... Um, we have probably, we have probably a, maybe 160, 170 that we okay. have access to a different, yeah. Okay. And the IT department is very good. Um, they've been helping us, making sure that, you know, you have 500 kids using them every day, but yeah. um, if we put in a work group, uh, you know, like a work order, they come right out and they, yeah. you know, fix it. And the kids have been really good about um, signing out the same one, returning it, you know, but 
when you have that many kids using things, um, there's always little things that happen, and the tech department has been really good about coming out and fixing yeah. everything that we need. I'm, I'm just being nosy because the school committee, one of the priorities of the committee has always been uh, technology and you know having student I mean our goal is to have one-to-one -one devices throughout the district but um, um, you know that's why I'm just sort of poking around trying to figure out where you're at and what uh, you know how you would benefit from in that it's, school it's been great the teachers have the technology in the classroom with the, the whiteboards but having the kids have the tablet in front of them and having them be able to go on and read things themselves not just on the board but have it right in front of them they can right. highlight their own information they can drag and drop things um, they're learning how to do research much better than if they had to go right. to a computer lab. Right, and like you said, I mean, the, in, in order to be competitive, in order, you know, going on into the future, you know, education, work, you know, this is this is what it's all about. So, um, That's right. Mr. Diagostino, did you have your hand up? Um, kind of following Mr. Manitello's lead um, is. The, I don't want to put this. What impact, you know, if any, um, do you think the number of devices you have compared to the number of students is having on, and I know they don't all take park at the same time, but do you feel that you have adequate devices for park testing? Is there any kind of negative impact on results? We're okay. As far as how many we have, would we like to have more and have the kids be able to have a, one signed to them all the time? That would be great. Right. But we're okay right now with what we, what, with what, the way we're doing it. Um, I wouldn't want to see a time where we were totally dependent upon the tablets because I think that the interactions, working with groups, cooperative learning, other mm -hmm. things that kids do, and again, the hands-on things that they're building and, and testing and, and science labs, you know, the virtual labs are great, but you really do want to get the kids right. you know get dirty a little mm -hmm. bit with certain things so um, I think that we're found a pretty good um, you know happy medium right now where we are um, okay. we're okay um, you'd love to have more but I think we're, we're doing well with what we have and I, we really appreciate I think the teachers are very appreciative of what they have okay so thank you thanks thanks fun to go to school there it's, I hope so. Uh, I'm thinking back when I went to school, it was nothing like that at all. And the, these recovery programs, yes. I'm call, where if a child is failing, there's a chance to catch up again. Yeah. I, you had two programs, I thought. We have um, the credit. Rec the credit recovery is actually um, if a student has failed, they go back and they. They actually go, they do the work, and we go right into the computer and change their grade first term from an F to a D, or they, we bring it up. Um, but we also have academic support for kids to prevent them. So once they've made it up, sometimes we get them right into the academic support so they don't end up in the same boat the next term. Um, so we have sort of, you know, an ongoing support, but then we also have the recovery if that doesn't work. It's just a real good idea. Thank you. Thank you. for your presentation it was really good it's nice to see for me as a middle school person to see what other people are doing a um, few programs that I'm familiar with the Alliance for Healthy Generation I worked with a lot as a phys ed teacher it's it's a great thing I'm happy that we're doing it here um, and credit recovery I actually administered the program here and it, it's nice to see it on the middle school level because uh, you know Tim just brought it up um, it's especially this time of year where people are we have a little bit more flexibility at the middle school level to promote. Um, so it's nice to see that there's an opportunity throughout the year for people to catch up. Um, and that takes place during the end of the day, the last period, you were yeah, saying? It, we have during our electric block, elective block. So you have a, a, they have their regular specialty classes, are, right. and then they have an, like an enrichment period. Right. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Um, and your EI inclusion, is it inclusion or is it It's EI separate? inclusion. Okay, so they're included in Main Street, inclusion. Yep. In each grade, we have one strand in every grade. Okay, and your resource room, right. um, is that sub-separate students? Yes. Okay. Yep, we have three, but they're sub-separate for homeroom um, English, math, science, uh, but they're included in all their electives right. and, and specials and things like that. And those are moderate no, level the, students? They're substantially separate. Okay, gotcha, thanks. 
stated to all of you, you know, she was one of the first when it came time to do the online testing with Park. We weren't, sh we weren't sure where we were going to be as a district. We certainly didn't have the capacity with one-to-one -one devices for everybody. We had had trial uh, testing, which was really mandated by the DESE. So again, Barbara came forward for her school, wanted to make sure that technology was there, and that her students and teachers could have an idea. Again, when you talk about 2019, it is not that far off from when that is going to be the mandate throughout the state for our students, uh, including their graduation requirement. Um, in, in looking and, and learning, uh, she mentioned that dip to you. It's something that they're still talking about throughout the state when you compare schools that are doing paper and, paper and pencil tests versus online, there have been some differences. They haven't been uh, so eager to come forward and really talk about them. But I'm pleased to hear you say, I heard the same thing from Principal McGrath when I was at the Raymond the other day, that this is your year, that we're really going to, again, you know, uh, make sure, but, but when I hear that, and I, I know how hard your teachers are working on instructional technology, preparing them, you know, for this high stakes testing, but make no mistake about it, when we talk about difficult budgets, and we talk about some of those things that we cut when you look back at technology. And as we you know, see hopefully some additional monies coming in, these are the kind of things we need to do for schools. We need to get our high school, our middle schools, and our youngest students coming in, having one-to-one -one devices. So this is a part of their education. Obviously, there's a balance, and I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, it's not just all about computers. Obviously, a teacher plays a big role here. Um, so again, uh, I, I want to thank you for the hard work going on, especially being an online school. Well, thank you for your time. Here we have time. All set. All set. Anyone else? Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, next, uh, item D, the ratification of memorandums of agreement. Um, the first one uh, is an MOA with the new dental plan, and that is with all Brockton Public School bargaining units. Do you want to take, you're going to take them separately? Are you want me to mention them and then you take them separately? Yes, I mean, that's a recommendation from the city uh, to move from one plan to um, the, I think it's called the Dental Blue Freedom Plan. Um, and uh, again, like you mentioned, it's a, a plan that was uh, collectively bargained with all bargaining units. So um, we can basically have a motion on each one separately. Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to make a motion to approve the MOA for the new dental plan for all the uh, Brock Public Schools bargaining units. Thank you. Someone would like here to second? Mr. Gormley seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Okay. Wonderful. Next item, Madam Superintendent. Is the uh, MOA with the BEA regarding the high school schedule. Uh, as you remember, when we uh, completed negotiations last year and had a ratification meeting, I believe, in early June, we quickly brought forward uh, this fall, once school came back, a task force from Brockton High School to take a look at what was negotiated as far as times and making sure that the changes would be uh, able to be implemented with success. So we went back to the table uh, and this MOU represents um, still the six period day. Um, it does talk about uh, the teacher day starting at 710, ending at uh, 2.23. Also, the periods were changed. I believe the first uh, period will be um, instead of 56 minutes, it's 58 minutes to include a period for taking attendance. The other periods are 55 minutes. Uh, you've got your periods in the middle at 30 minutes and ending again with your last period at 55 uh, minutes. So, uh, there's any questions? Ms. Plant. Um, I believe the actual time is 7.20. 7.10 for the teachers. Right, their day it goes from 7.10 and still ends at 2.23. So the times that were changed when we originally negotiated, we had come up with um, I believe 56 minute periods and in looking at what it would be like to get through without really a homeroom period there needed to be attendance taken and that's going to be taken in their first period class so we reduced it by 
56 to 55 minutes uh, and made some adjustments uh, in that first period to 58 to allow for that attendance taking. Correct. Other than they've added uh, an additional period that teachers are teaching it's each day. Instead of three uh, teaching periods, it's now four. Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to make a motion that we approve item number two, MOA with the BEA regarding the high school schedule. Second, um, just a brief discussion on the motion. The, um, the benefit and the purpose you know, surrounding this is that it um, will provide more classroom time to have additional classes. So, you know, there's some foreign language classes that are booked solid. Um, there's some, you know, math classes. There's elective classes that kids can't get in. So by creating another, um, another opportunity, another period to, to basically have those classes, you know, frees up, you know, a student's schedule who right now, you know, has to say, I can't take this because I have banned, I can't take this elective, or I'm having trouble fitting in my foreign language. Um, we even had some students that I believe had to take some courses over at Massasoit, right? Because they couldn't fit in, yes, um, they had to, you know, they had to, couldn't fit in, in their day, a foreign language. And I believe that, um, you know, we would send them over to Massasoit. And a cost, there was, there was a cost to that as well, you know, but obviously an inconvenience too. So this, you know, this is um, a change. Uh, some people embrace change, some people don't embrace change. But, you know, the, the underlying goal was to provide more opportunity for our students to be able to take the courses that they desired to take, you know, within the school day. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a change, but, um, you know, the intent was, um, you know, was to help our kids, you know, so. Anything else? Did you want to add anything to that? Or? That's it. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor, which was properly second. All in favor? Okay, great. Thank you. And the last one is the MOA with the BEA regarding uh, religious leave time. Again, when we completed uh, negotiations uh, last spring, one of the things we looked at was a change in our population. Uh, we originally had the uh, Jewish holidays, which typically fall in September and October depending on the year as part of our school calendar. Uh, we eliminated those as uh, days off for the general population and we kept the language ed that had always been in the contract. If somebody again worships or believes the tenets of, of a particular religion and had a letter from a bona fide faith leader, then they would be allowed to take those days off. We quickly found out that the legal language was not correct there was a new language and had to be replaced with a sincerely held religious belief. Um, so in order to change that language, which is the MOA in front of you now, we still kept the language of, again, if somebody has a sincerely held religious belief, they need to produce a letter from a bona fide faith leader, which would be kept uh, certainly uh, in, their, in their folder. This goes through Dr. Moran's office. They would certainly be allowed to practice uh, those days that they needed off. One of the changes we also made was there had been two personal days for this bargaining unit and because of uh, knowing that there were additional days people wanted to take off for religious leave, we added a personal day. That's the second page of the MOA that you're reading. So we changed the language to reflect and both attorneys on both sides agreed that that language in order to be uh, compliant with the law changed from tenets of your religion to sincerely held religious belief and an extra personal day has been added to all of your uh, BEA members. Ms. Plant. I think we already discussed this before. When we did that, we did make sure that this would give them enough days off to sufficiently to cover all the major Jewish holidays. Um, well, there are three, day, three personal days that people can use for whatever they so choose. And beyond that, if they choose to take Re additional religious days off, they can take them. It would be without pay. The personal days are with pay. And how many days did we take out of the calendar? How many Jewish holidays did we remove? Typically, uh, it depends on how they fall, but there could be three in any given calendar year. The major holidays, uh, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? 
Anyone care to make a motion? Mr. Sullivan, you've been doing a good job. I'll make a motion to approve item three, the MOA with the DEA on a religious lease plan. Thank you for seconding, Ms. Azak. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, wonderful. And the next item is our uh, tw uh, FY17 uh, budget update. Uh, again, this is something that we've been working on for many, many months. Uh, unfortunately for you, as soon as you were on board, you know, we were dealt with a budget, which we saw a $10 million deficit out of the starting gate. Uh, we've worked very hard together uh, as a school committee uh, and administration looking at everything we could possibly look at, uh, let alone advocacy, working with our legislative, our uh, elected officials to make sure that we were resourcing our district as best we can. So the recommendation again, um, in light of the mayor coming forward and meeting us at foundation, uh, it has allowed us to go through our, as we said, our rounds of looking at administration, uh, looking at those things outside of the classroom teacher and then the recommendations that we made tonight which again going forward it would be the recommendation is to allow our human resource uh, executive director to prepare a hundred re up to a hundred reduction in force notices with the idea that presently there are 59 positions to do not fill 57 positions that we would not be bringing back at this time from our ranks. Um, also, that allowed you uh, over $600,000 to take a look at some of those items at this point in time that you might want to bring back on board. And I also say that knowing that we're watching the House finish their budget now at the Senate level, coming through the state, we'll watch those funds come through. We'll continue to watch uh, not only the per pupil, um, excuse me, the additional money that they gave per pupil across the state, which looks like an amount of $618,000. Um, again, it does have to go through the process before we can count on that. Also looking at the $10 million, which is considered a so-called pothole fund for those communities affected by the economically disadvantaged designation and losing a large number of our low-income students. So this is, again, a process that we'll probably go through for a couple of more months until we get a better handle. Uh, the recommendation is also, when we talk about those 57 plus 259 teaching positions, it allows us to go forward next year and not be dealing with this same type of $10 million budget deficit. If, in fact, as we look at, and I asked you, and I use the word again, ambiguity that we're dealing with, with all of these different factors, charter school, you know, state budget, looking at our city and what they can do to support. So with all of these things happening, uh, what I'm asking uh, going forward is if in fact those numbers change, we will have a major focus on those class sizes. And if in fact we have to bring teachers back from that, if we have to look at administrators because of compliance, we will continue to do that throughout the process and throughout the summer before we open those doors in September. Um, it's something that we did discuss at the finance subcommittee. Um, the mayor met what's called foundation. That um, has not happened in the, in the last um, Year, well, the last number of years that I've been on the school committee, which is basically uh, nine, and um, you know, basically he is being as generous as he possibly can. Uh, foundation is basically the state recommended number, uh, which he is meeting. Uh, by law, he has the right to hold back up to five percent of the recommended foundation budget. He's, he um, understands the predicament that the schools are in, um, and is basically stepping up to the plate. Uh, in, in, in a manner that um, took us all a bit by surprise, but which we are all grateful for. He recognizes the uh, dilemma that you know, this budget is, so um, he deserves some credit for that. So um, that being said, are we happy where we're at? Absolutely not, because we all know that um, the state, this budget term, um, change the formula to Brockton's detriment. And we are advocating on behalf of the city and our students um, and have been loud and clear with them at every uh, level possible. We've been working with our state delegation who have been wonderful and who have been advocating on our behalf in Beacon Hill. But, um, you know, we're in a tough situation and we're, you know, basically in this together and we're trying to make the best of what we have in a, 
in, a, in, in an awful budget uh, year. So uh, there's some hard decisions that this committee has to make, but um, I have faith that everyone's doing their due diligence and um, we will make decisions in the best interest of our students. So that's my two cents worth for that. Um, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, I did not think I was going to be finishing this meeting. Um, the mayor had a meeting at City Hall, a very important meeting that um, he thought he was going to be able to um, come here late, but apparently um, he's unable to do so. So um, we are getting towards the end, are we not, Madam Superintendent? Yes, um, just the items to refer to subcommittee. Um, and we'd like to be able to have uh, Wanda Alves uh, work with your schedules because we have three very important committees. I've been talking to you about it. One is policy. I mentioned we do have an intern working with us. We'll have some information to present to you and we had talked about again reviewing all our policies going forward before we start the school year uh, next September. Uh, also facility usage we need to start to take a look at our facility usage going forward next year in light of you know some of the changes we see happening in our district and I think uh, most importantly our safety and security subcommittee. So those would be the three uh, subcommittees we've got summer quickly approaching so we'd like to set those dates so we actually as we get through budget and finance we can start to make those our priorities to start to look at our safety and security policy and facility usage in the district. Uh, we should probably put the safety, security, and transportation um, at, the, at the forefront because I know that uh, some of the members wanted to discuss um, the recent high school incident, you know, and obviously the transportation issue uh, when we have a little more information from City Hall with regard to our non-net school funding mm -hmm. and um, where we're going to be at. So um, I'll talk to you. Ms. Alves about scheduling that. Um, I know Ms. Plant wanted to talk about that, Mr. Diagostino, um, and I'm sure other members as well. Um, so we will definitely see what's uh, see availability. Okay. okay. And uh, I just want to finish up with uh, two very quick things, or maybe three. Um, we did have a student uh, from West Middle School who was injured, uh, actually was, was hit by a car. Is this an uh, unfinished, Elias? unfinished business? Or? Uh, no, this is just my report. I'm just finishing it. Oh, okay. Very is that good. okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. So Elias Lebon, a student at West Middle School. Uh, I want to thank his uh, fellow students at West Middle School who have been supporting him. The good news is I spoke to his mom today, and he is home from the hospital. Um, he is recovering in the school district as we do for all students will continue to support him until he's able to come back if in fact he is for the rest of this year. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Murray and our students at West Middle School for continuing to support the student, their family, the mother couldn't say enough about how a very difficult si situation was made better by all the support of the teachers and the students at West Middle School and the community. So thank you. I also want to remind everybody that starting May, it's hard to believe this is May, it doesn't feel like May, but this is Art Week in Brockton. Uh, Bill Magali and a group of community members, uh, make sure you get an Art Week calendar. There are things going on over all over the city, not only our students, you see the art show out there, you know, our drama festival, so many things happening in the community. Please take advantage, not just our students, but also adults, very, very talented people. Uh, I know this is in your packet, but you know, please take a moment to uh, to take a look at this. Uh, we can post that on the website, correct? Yes. I, is it on the website? If, the athlete, if not, we can get it up there. Yeah, that'll be wonderful. And uh, again, we have the Boxer Battalion, our annual dining out, a wonderful event uh, this Thursday evening from 5:30 to 9:30. So we look forward to seeing many of you at the Boxer Battalion. And that is it. Okay. So. I don't see anything under unfinished business unless someone has something they want to discuss under unfinished business. Okay. Under new business, uh, the finance subcommittee met uh, this evening at 6 o'clock. We received a budget update from the superintendent and uh, Mr. Petronio. At that meeting, uh, we discussed basically where we're at and uh, we're obviously presented with a um, mid-May deadline with respect to um, providing notice of reduction in force notices to our, um, our staff. At that meeting, um, we decided to uh, adopt the superintendent's recommendation of uh, issuing 100 RIF notices with the understanding that uh, 57 actual positions and two 
um, non-filled positions uh, for a total of 59 positions are basically going to be the reality for next year's budget. Um, and these committee voted, deliberated and also voted to approve that. So we would uh, need to ratify that at the meeting tonight. So I would need a motion to approve the 100 recommended uh, reduction in force notices at this time. I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the 100 recommended rep notices that the superintendent has made tonight. Okay, a second? Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay, and we do so regrettably. Well, again, I, I want to mention um, we're going to continue to work on this. This is a budget that is very difficult to recommend, which is why at the outset that's exactly what I said. You know, people have come together. I agree, uh, Mr. Minicello. The mayor and the city is doing the best that they can. They're, they're committed to continuing to work with us. Um, and as I said, we'll look for every dollar and how to best spend it uh, for the year to come to best benefit our students. Uh, we will be having our next finance subcommittee meeting next Tuesday, the 10th, right? I believe it's the 10th. Yes. Um, obviously, it provides the school committee with a further opportunity to uh, discuss the budget, discuss um, some last-minute tweaks with respect to positions because I believe those notices will be going out um, on the, well, the it being issued the on the 12th, but handed out on the 13th, right? So... Okay. Um, I, I would just like to say that uh, bef on a positive note, because uh, uh, we need some positive notes, uh, when you walked into the auditorium this evening, I, I was floored with some of the um, artwork that I saw out there, uh, the paintings, the sketches, the pottery. Uh, it was, it's just wonderful. I mean, and so much of it, you know, so much of it. There's so many talented kids here in the school system. I mean, when I was a kid, I couldn't, if I was lucky, to do stick figures, you know. But uh, these kids are just so far advanced and so talented, you can, you can just see it. Uh, and, you, and you're really amazed by the work. I know that a number of uh, the school committee members were out there. Um, um, and you know what's nice, too, is that um, there was a lot of staff out there and people that were not associated with the art department, um, you know, supporting and you know, viewing some of the students that they know their work. You know, they probably are teaching them in other subjects, but um, um, just a lot of energy. There were plenty of parents out there as well, which was nice. Um, and I believe that um, the cable station was also doing interviews with students and um, taking note and um, will, I'm sure, do a nice job of uh, televising on the cable channel, you know, the, the, the many works of beautiful art that, uh, you know, are just very impressive, so. Anyone else have anything to uh, Mr. D'Agostino? Um, and I apologize if I don't do this correctly. As you know, I'm still learning the right procedures for things. But um, I had previously had a conversation with uh, one of our city councilors, Councilor Azak, um, about um, she was going to present a um, resolve to the city council regarding, regarding our budget and has done so. And uh, I also said I would do the same here at, the, at, at a school committee meeting. Um, we're a few weeks behind them, but we don't meet uh, but once in, in April. Um, <clears throat> so I guess is the process that I would read this into the record and we would... Well, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what you're going to do, so, <laughs> you know. Adopt the resolve? Is that the, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what the process for this well, kind of thing is. It's a resolve relating to Chapter 70 asking, I'm sorry, resolve related to Chapter 70 asking um, that the um, state budget um, be uh, amended to basically count the kids that have not been counted at this time. Sounds reasonable. Why don't you read it in so that we can all digest what it is That's, you're okay. asking and then we can discuss it and if someone Wonderful. wants to make a motion, you know, then we can All right. second it, further discussion, but I'm okay. not sure exactly what you're going to read, so I <laughs> well, can't say I'm going to vote know for the, it until right. I know what okay. you're going to. All right. Um, whereas I'm sure the it's reasonable, Mr. Yeah, I, I try to be reasonable <laughs> in anything I would do. 
Whereas the governor's budget for fiscal year 2017 includes an increase of 72 million or 1.6 statewide for chapter 70 K through 12 education. And whereas the chapter 70 budget for the city of Brockton is recommended for an increase of just $343,480 or only 0.02%. And whereas the end result of the proposed FY17 budget is a reduction of $6,546,084 in the city's total foundation budget entitlement, whereas the primary reason for the disparity in the percentage of funding, a funding increase for the city is city as opposed to the state is a change in the funding for low income or economically disadvantaged students. And whereas this change has distorted the pattern of state revenue assistance for educating low income students from many of the poorest communities to our affluent, to our affluent communities or to our more affluent communities. And whereas this change has resulted in a loss of $5,878,464 in Chapter 70 funding from FY16 to FY17 for this category of Brockton students. And whereas the loss of foundation budget entitlement imperils the city's ability to provide adequate education for its students now and in the future. And whereas this condition is contrary to both the spirit and intent of the Hancock decision by the Supreme Court regarding equity and education funding, now be it resolved that the school committee of the city of Brockton hereby request that the FY17 chapter 70 funding formula or funding for low income students be revised so that the communities whose districts educate the vast majority of low income or economically disadvantaged students are adequately assisted in accomplishing this objective. Um, I share the spirit. <laughs> Sounds reasonable to me. Um, any further, any discussion by any of the other members? So why don't you make a motion then to adopt the resolves as presented? I make a motion to, to adopt this resolve as presented. Second, any further discussion? I think we're all in agreement about that. So um, how do we vote? All in favor? Perfect. Excellent. Thank okay. Um, Madam Superintendent, if um, what I would recommend is that um, the minutes of that um, vote be presented and sent to Beacon Hill. Yes. Uh, you as our secretary um, would obviously take care of making sure that is forwarded to Beacon Hill. Um, are you all set, Mr. D'Agostino? If anybody wants copies of that, I have. I, I would love to have a copy of that. Those are in everyone's packet. Okay. okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Gormley, did you want to do... Um, Yes, okay. <laughs> wow. This one I knew about. This one you knew about. It's, to, um, it's a resolution against lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools. Um, this is something that I campaigned on, and we've talked about ad nauseum here, um, but I believe that we're all in agreement that the cap needs to stay and that the dangers of lifting the cap um, are quite scary. So the resolve reads like this, and thank you to the MTA for providing us with this language. Whereas free public schools available at all students, regardless of income, ability, need, or English language proficiency are foundational to our democracy. And whereas all of our students deserve high quality public schools that teach the whole child, providing enrichment and addressing social and emotional needs in addition to core academic subjects. And whereas local accountability for our public schools is necessary to ensure that schools are responsive to the needs of their communities. And whereas Brockton is losing millions of dollars from charter schools, Commonwealth charter schools, and public districts across the state are losing more than $408 million this year alone. A loss of funds that is undermining the ability of districts to provide all students with the educational services to which they are entitled. Whereas Commonwealth charter schools are often approved over the objections of a majority of community residents and their elected officials and are not accountable to local elected, elected officials once they are approved. And whereas Commonwealth charter schools often fail to serve the same proportion of special needs students, low income students, and English language learners as the districts from which they receive students, and often use high suspension rates to drive out students 
they don't want to serve. And whereas the Commonwealth Charter School system is creating a separate and unequal opportunities for success, and whereas lifting the cap on charter schools would greatly worsen the problems listed above and lead to a costly and divisive two-track system. Therefore, be it resolved that the Brockton School Committee opposes lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools. Thank you. Share that sentiment as well. Um, anyone else? No? Um, Mr. Gormley, why don't you make the motion then? Right. I'd like to make, into a, make a motion to adopt this resolve. I need a second. Mr. D'Agostino, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. How do we vote? All in favor? Okay. Great. Um, Ms. Azak, do you have any surprises for me this evening? <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Um, not really that new because it's in regards to the Barrett Russell. Um, I did receive some phone calls. I know that we heard um, several people speak here this evening, and we have a pile of emails right here from um, parents that. Um, Ms. Camillo has provided us. I also have some emails I believe I've already forwarded. Um, I just want to make you aware that I also have received phone calls um, from, from parents and from staff as well, letting me know how important the Barrett Russell is to them. I don't think they say anything we haven't heard here this evening, but I would like to see if I could provide you. I did bring a copy of the emails that I do have. And would we be able to um, provide these? Could we pass these out to the school committee? Could it somehow get in the packet so that you can all read these emails that um, Ms. Camillo has provided as well? Not a problem. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, so you'll just disperse them out? Yes. Okay, yep. perfect. Mr. Sullivan, do you have a resolve for us this no, evening? No. Okay. I would just like to thank the principal of the Barrett Russell and her staff for coming out tonight. We hear you 100%. I've received a lot of phone calls, none in the negative, all positive to keep that school open. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Azak. I do have something to say. Um, I, thank you. Thank you for having me on Monday. Um, all I can say, I was in awe. Everything from the gardening outside, the murals inside, the just it was vibrant, it was bright. The teachers were just... Um, I, it was very welcoming. As soon as we walked through the door, it was very welcoming. Um, I just want to just one more time just say, it's not so much just closing a school. It's the neighborhood, it's the community, and it took so many years to get the Barrett Russell to where it is right now. Um, I just, if we can try what we can just to try to keep it open. I too have received emails, phone calls. I've been approached by some of the teachers, parents, parents that have children that are going to be going well hopefully going to the Barrett Russell in, in a year or two if it's still if it's still there so I think it would be a shame it's a new school old bones but a brand new school Mr. Gormley you look like you're ready to say something um, no you're good <laughs> okay anyone else all right Thank you all very much, and uh, I'd like to thank the audience this evening, a lot of people. Um, normally, uh, people sort of trickle out on us and don't stay to the end. There's usually a small little sp spattering of people. So um, appreciate your attentiveness and um, your um, attention. So thank you all. How about a motion to adjourn this evening? Motion to adjourn. Second? All right, all in favor? Great. Thank you for attending. <laughs>